Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shijun Wang. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to continue uh, with the Chopin Second Ballad, Opus 38. Um, and last time we stopped at major 83. And, and I'm, I'm going to today continue with that and hopefully finish this whole piece and then this whole series of Chopin Four Ballads uh, today. Um, so last time um, we talked about how this is really a portrait of Schumann himself, not only that this piece is dedicated to him. So it has this exaggerated kind of interword poetic and then this kind of fanatic and a crazy passion. And measure 83 is the return of the beginning, which is the, the calm. And of course, this is a chorale texture. Um, you know, everything is similar on two measure 96. This is, of course, so it's from the same motive. Yeah, almost like Chopin is treating this like a development section in a sonata, allegro sonata form. So, then change it. But then what we have is a imitation between the tenor and then the sopranos. the same but then with different harmony uh, provided the second time because the first time is second time is yeah it's 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 more intense uh, what is this this is a diminished chord yeah so one of composer's favorite because it not only can give us a kind of a, a strange feeling yeah a mysterious feeling it also can go anywhere and then another time of the duke have a stretto piumoso so you have to speed up the tempo right hand of course has this chromatic scale going up yeah, using the same rhythm but then left hand it's exactly the same motive from the same DNA yeah so this is really a tradition from the classical era using one motive to develop the whole piece okay so well in the way in terms of the form Chopin is really a conservative yeah? <laughs> again but in a different key first we have the imitation and then we have this diminished chord hesitation and then The same thing, yeah. Um, almost reminds me of the uh, second ballad by uh, Liszt, yeah, because the whole thing was represented again in a different key, and this again is this exactly the same material but represented in a different key. Um, in measure one forty one, the crazy. 
Matthew Schumann appears again. Yeah, all the technical things are exactly the same. Uh, of course, this is D minor instead of A minor, but soon after this return to A minor, so nothing new here. If you uh, listen to the pre previous uh, episode, however, the coda here is quite challenging. Yeah, without the coda, this is the the, the, the difficult level is way below other uh, compared to other ballads. But with this coda, it adds some weight. Yeah. <laughs> And I had a very good listener who suggested to me or, or uh, left me comments saying this ending really sounds like the Toccata Etudes, uh, Opus 10, number 7. And this really, especially in the second a measure here, measure 170. Yeah, and it's similar to the Toccata. However, the Toccata's etudes has a pretty much unchanged uh, alternation between three or the third and the sixth. Therefore, for most of the time, the fingering are the same. But here, Fourth, now we have the fifth, and here we have the sixth, and then thirds, and even uh, seconds. So, uh, in terms of variety, of course, this has more variety, which means we have to have a much more flexible wrist and finger to adjust to all the intervals. Okay. But one thing very interesting, um, also I've mentioned in the etude series, that Chopin is not really fond of repeated pattern. Okay, even when he was doing the octave etudes, it's all moving notes. Yeah, yeah always. Right, it's moving chromatically. Unlike Liszt, who would be would really stuck that one note in the octave. Or even single notes, Chopin rarely do, do something like that. But, yeah, Liszt is really fond of single note repeat repetition. But here, we do have a repeated pattern. Yeah. So, first of all, the trick here is the actual technique doesn't start on the first note of the repeated notes, but the second. So the first, yeah, we can really tell that Chopin wanted us to know that because the slur is not from the first note. The first note is almost like a pickup. Yeah, which makes it much easier that than thinking that way. Of course, nobody would. Um, and also, um, the biggest thing for successfully playing repeated notes is the note placement. Okay, we know the keys are long. Um, we cannot, or we should not, place the second note exactly in the same spot on the key. Either you adjust it a little further or further forward or you adjust it a little backward, depend on the size and ratio of your hand. But for instance, I'm stopping here and I want to put forward a little bit. Meaning the, the it's not stuck here, but The other thing here is that um, since we're grouping two notes each, yeah, one, two, one, two, or one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, um, some groups have the note going down. For, for instance, the first one, F, D sharp, is going down. Some has 
the notes going up like this D sharp E. But if you listen to my Chopin Etude series, right hand always feels more comfortable to play towards the right side. So it doesn't matter if the notes are going down or up, the wrist always moves from the left side to the right side. So, so it needs some adjustment, but it's possible see, to even play the notes downward, but having the wrist moving upward. But of course, it's not a big motion. When, when you play fast, nobody should be able to detect it. And here is the same thing every two notes. Okay? And here right hand now has a repeated note. Yeah? Again, place them in a different spot or maybe forward but not stock them in the same place and also here the melody should be should be in this lower voice the alternation between the thumb and then the second finger so we have to readjust the center of the, the note uh, of the hand in order to show the melody. Um, towards the end, of course, it requires before yeah, every four notes we need to adjust, but now every two. But as long as you have you have a very firm hand position, this shouldn't be so difficult. Yeah, so really pay attention to the support of the finger knuckles. A lot of times students miss notes not because they didn't aim it well, because when they place their note, their finger uh, tips were collapsing so that it doesn't provide a kind of a well support to play those notes. And of course, the ending. <laughs> This top note, we have to use our arm a little bit. Of course, including the left hand. And then... Yeah. And somehow, Chopin decided to, to end this. Yeah? Like the beginning. And, and I guess there could be many reasons. I guess one thing, he wants the beginning to be also like the ending, or the ending is like the beginning, right? So after all, life is a circle. Um, so this is a really a very popular thought among composers. Uh, and also could be Chopin just wanted to portray uh, Schumann this way, but this is really the only ballad that ends in kind of a calm or a soft uh, ending. Um, I want to really appreciate everyone who followed me uh, and watched all these tutorials. Uh, it's really has been a, a crazy journey. Uh, I, first of all, I didn't think I could finish the a2 series and now I have just finished another uh, big uh, monumental project of all four ballads and to be honest I don't know what I will do next okay I, I have so many pieces in mind Schubert or uh, Brahms or even some Russian music um, but again I, I haven't decided yet so probably um, now that the school will start very soon I will probably take a break and take a look at my teaching schedule since the school starts and then have 
maybe come back in a couple of weeks or if not months. But again, I want to sincerely thank everyone who supported my channel. Um, and if you think my contents are helpful, um, please share with your friends. Again, the initial idea of making this uh, is to really reach out and help as many pianists as possible since the pandemic, since everyone who used to have face-to-face -face lessons now uh, have no chance of playing for your teacher face-to-face. And hopefully things will get better as the vaccination rate goes up and uh, we will conquer this pandemic thing all together. All right, thank you for watching. See you in the near future.